Today we're making a mitered square. A mitered square has this cool diagonal look to it. And in fact, this one is not really an authentic miter, but it looks like it with the two tones on it. This is actually going from corner to corner and it's a mock miter. So we call it a C to C mock miter and it's bicolor or two color. We're gonna make one today from start to finish on any loom and an appropriate yarn. Let's begin. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. To make your loom knit mock miter, you're going to need two colors of yarn. Okay, so I am using Red Heart Sheep Sheep for my color A. I'm using Creme de Mint, which is kind of a seek foam color. And then I'm using Mai Tai, which is a kind of a coral color. And these are a four, a medium four weight yarn. And then I'm working with a small gauge or three eighths gauge loom that has at least about 47, 48 pegs across. You can actually make this whatever size that you want. You just need to be able to get as many stitches on for the width here. Okay, so the largest length across, like a isosceles triangle, you have the two shorter sides and then the longer side here, so you need as many stitches across to hold that, and that is what loom you use, and then use an appropriate weight yarn for that. You need, of course, the two balls of yarn. You'll also need a tapestry needle later on, and your loom tool, but also one little stitch marker, and I'll show you how to get right in the middle of one of these boards so that you can uh, make sure you have enough pegs and you won't have to move them over. So be sure and get the pattern down at the links below in our blog. You can uh, see that for free, or you can download one uh, for purchase at goodknitkisses.com. Let's grab our stuff and we'll begin. All right, let's talk about where to put your uh, slip knot. This is uh, this is where I'm beginning here. I've got 48 pegs across, and of course, if yours is different, that's okay. Uh, if you count uh, inward from the end, just go 24 pegs in, and this other side is 24 pegs in on this side, but um, on my right-handed video, you'll see that this is one stitch to the right of where this, um, this hole is, and on the left-handed video, that looks like it's coming from the left. Um, that is where I'm beginning, and that's my slip knot. I'm gonna do a double E-wrap cast on where I actually cast on three stitches. And then my peg one is actually over here and we'll have a knit row going back over to this direction. So if you wanna do a different cast on, that's fine. I just wanna explain that. The reason why it's important is if you have only 48 pegs across, we're gonna be doing 47 pegs and it's easier to not have to turn the corner. So um, it's fine if you wanna turn a corner on any other loom but I just like to keep it on one rail. So that being said, let's uh, begin with our cast on. Let's start with our slip knot. Just gonna wrap my tail around my finger twice, pull the back loop over the front slightly and up and over the tip of my finger one more time and place that on my marked peg. Go ahead and tighten that up a little bit. Put my tail down below. I like to pull my tail uh, toward me and trap it underneath the loom so that I can uh, work this next stitch uh, a little bit better. Okay, we're going to be uh, e-wrapping in this direction. So go ahead and e-wrap that first stitch one more time so that it has an actual stitch on there. That's the double e-wrap. Okay, and tighten that up, pull on that tail. All right, the next one we're going to double e-wrap. I just put my loom tool down here, wrap it twice. Lift up and over, tighten it up, and one more time. Okay, whatever cast on you try, just make sure it's opposite of where uh, this marked peg is. And uh, this is gonna be your peg one here for the foundation row. Okay, so foundation row is the only one that doesn't increase. Go ahead and unit wrap all the way across. You can um, E-wrap if you like. Uh, but if you e-wrap, your stitches are going to be looser and your gauge is going to be a little bit bigger. So that means that your, um, your square can be a little bit larger. Okay, so we're going to start our first increase row. I'm going to show you how to do it and then we'll look at the pattern. So we're going to be increasing and whenever we increase, it will go to the outside. So our next row is going to be purl because this is a garter stitch. So every other row is knit and every other row is purl. We just did a knit row, so we're gonna do a purl row. All the purl rows start like this. We're going to knit, but we're going to put the yarn on the top and do a reverse purl or a true knit stitch. So we pull downward and get this loop off. 
and then just place it on this outside peg here. All right, so we're just placing it there. And then we want to e-wrap that. So this is actually a twisted knit stitch or knit through the back loop is what an e-wrap does. And when we knit that over uh, and pull that tight, it is ready to um, begin. So we've made an increase here and then we've worked this twisted stitch to get it in the right position. And now we're ready to purl the remainder of the row. So let's purl these two stitches. Okay, so if you notice that the purl row always ends on an even number when we're doing the increases. And now we're going to start the knit row and we're going to do the same type of true knit stitch. We're gonna wrap around in this direction and pull downward to get a loop. And then place that loop, I move my working yarn in between here, place the loop on that outside peg. So we're going to the outside first. And now we want to work this stitch. Now on this one only, we're going to be purling the stitch here, okay? Purl that stitch and it sets it up in a nice direction for us, okay? If you e-wrap, it doesn't it doesn't quite work and it doesn't uh, look as good. So uh, then we want to move on with knitting to the end of this row. So you wrap knit one, two, and three. Okay, all of your rows for increases are going to look exactly like that. You've ended a knit row with an odd number of stitches. Well, now let's talk about what the names of those stitches are. So what you just did is you did a knit in the front loop and back loop. So we did a knit, okay, so we did a KFB. Here's the knit, and then we place it on our loom, and then here is knitting in the back loop, which is that twisted knit stitch, that's that E-wrap. So knit in the front and back loop, okay? Then we purled to the end, and we have an even number of stitches, this is six. Okay, and now this row here, we're going to be knitting across and we want to increase first. So we knit in the front and purl in the back of this one. So we're going to knit, grab that stitch and put it on the outside peg. And then on this one only, we're purling, okay? There's a reason for that, it actually uh, helps um, it helps set it up much better uh, looking for your final um, your final um, square. Okay, and then now you knit across. And then we're ending with an odd number of stitches. So if you continue this until you get the desired width, or in this case, 47 stitches, you will um, get to where we need to be for this square. Let me back up and I'm gonna show you the pattern for a moment. So we've uh, cast it on in contrast A, so that was the first color that you wanted to start with. And then we did a foundation row of knit, and then we did our KFB P3, which is purl three, and then we did a row of KFPB, which is um, with a purl part, and then we uh, knit across, and so we had five stitches, and then we did the next rows. The next rows you did were basically the same thing, we're just wording it a little bit different, so rows three and four are gonna be repeated. We do a KFB, and then purl to the end of the row, and then we do a KFPB, and knit to the end of the row. That is all you do, is you just continue to repeat those uh, rows three and four until 47 stitches are on the loom. It's approximately four and a half inches, but it's really hard to measure that because it's all uh, spaced out. And then um, you end after a row four, so we're ending after you complete uh, knitting to the end of the row, okay? Uh, or of course you can continue until you have your desired um, width across uh, that you'd like and an odd number of stitches after row four. So uh, continue doing that and then we're going to um, meet back up on this row here. All right, pause your video and I will see you soon. All right, so we've knit to the width that we want. We're ending on an odd number um, back on this side over here. And after repeating rows three and four to that uh, length or an odd number of stitch that you want, uh, we're going to purl. So row five is just purl only. There is no increasing 
and there's no decreasing just quite yet. Uh, we're going to work a couple of rows straight away, but after this row we will add on color. So go ahead and purl your row across, pause your video, and meet me back there and we'll add that color in. See you soon. Row 6, we're going to take our color B and go ahead and tie that on. You can use a slip knot, and what I'm doing is I'm just uh, going to hold these tails together here and knit that first stitch give a little bit of tension and go ahead and pull on those uh, two yarns here. This is just my tail yarn and then I'm going to knit across all the stitches and the first couple stitches I go ahead and just pull that tight and then knit the next stitch and yarn over and knit the next stitch. Okay, so a safely color change. It's not going to have a slip knot or anything, and then I can just uh, weave these tails in easier later. You can go ahead and safely cut your yarn on the old color, and that's done. And continue knitting across. And then for row seven, you're just going to purl across. So I don't think I need to actually show that to you right now. Pause your video, do those two rows, knit across, purl across, meet me back uh, on this side over here, and we'll work on the first of our decreases. See you soon. Okay, I'm finishing a row seven, and I've got one last stitch I want to show you. I'm going to hold my, um, my tails from the last row, because when I work this very last purl, it needs a bit more tension on it. Okay, and that way my stitches aren't super loose there. I've got more control. And now we're going to be moving stitches inward to decrease, okay? Now, if you're on the right-handed video, this is called a K2 tog. And really all you're doing is you're taking um, stitches and moving them one over on top of the one next to it. And then we're going to be knitting them both together. So we are going to pick up the second stitch from the end and move it on top of the third and then move the first one. Okay. Get that tightened up a little bit. Okay. And then now we have two stitches on the second peg and one on the first, and you can go ahead and knit all the stitches on your row. So we knit one here, and then we're knitting two together here and then uh, continue across, knitting all the way across. Pause your video and I will meet you at the other side and we will work on the decrease on a purl row. See you soon. For row nine, we're gonna be doing something similar, moving the second stitch to the third stitch to put it on top, but we're gonna be purling. And so that is an SSP. So pick up the second stitch and move it over to the third. And then you can move your first stitch over to what was the second and it's now your first and we're going to be purling this row so this is a purl one and then SSP or slip slip purl so we're purling those two together and going across so um, the right-handed knitters would call this an SSP from this side okay and uh, we're just gonna be working our way all the way across. You continue working those two rows, either uh, on the uh, knit row or the purl row, you're just moving one stitch in, uh, leaving the end peg with just knitting uh, one or purling one, and then the next one you're purling the two together or you're knitting the two together. All right, pause your video and meet me back up when you have five stitches left and we'll work those last couple of rows together. See you soon five stitches left. I'm just going to do these last few until we get to three left. So go ahead and move these over and knit, knit two together, knit and knit. And then we're going to move this one over here, this one here, and go ahead and purl one Purl these two together and then purl. And that leaves us with our last row and our last stitch. So you have three on your loom and you're going to take this one and move it to the center and take the next one and move it to the center. So the outside stitches go on the middle stitch just like this. You have three left and now you're just going to knit all three over. So you can do one at a time if it's too bulky for you. 
over all three. There we go. And then uh, we're just going to be pulling this off, but I like to, instead of just pulling it straight through, I'm going to go ahead and purl one through. Just pull up a loop purl-wise, and then we're going to cut this strand and just pull it all the way through. And it's off the loom here. There we go. And there you have your square. All right, so you're gonna be weaving in your tails and you wanna weave those in first before blocking, but let me just talk to you quick about blocking. So first of all, I kind of hand block it before I wet block and uh, it's been stretched out this way the entire time over the loom. So once you're um, pulling it off the loom, you can just pull it lengthwise this way and that'll get it more squared up. And when you do block it, you can actually uh, either wash it or you can hand wash it and then squeeze it uh, dry so it's nice and damp. And then you'll pin it out into the square, uh, just nice and even, um, pins that don't rust, little T-pins that don't rust, and have it um, squared out and make sure the corners are done. Now, this is a little bit deceiving on this garter stitch here. It's kind of has this little curve, but really once you pin it out, it actually is very, uh, very straight. And when you uh, sew these up to another one, like say if you were making a design that did this or did this, um, it will actually straighten itself out because you're going to sew them up next to that. So on these tails here, we're just going to just pick one of the colors. I'm gonna do the orange one first. This is my color B. Orange, Mai Tai, Coral, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, and so we're just gonna go over this little stitch here and go down, not pulling too tight. And I'm gonna go around this little part here and up. And we're gonna follow this stitch around in the same color down. And I'm gonna go down a couple uh, ridges and use that same technique, go around that little curve, depending on how you look at it, if I'm here, I can call that a smile. We're gonna go around the smile and up through this umbrella, up through this little smile here, and then around and down and continue in duplicate stitch. And so you're just gonna do that for uh, this one as well. And you can straighten it into place if you need to, uh, but just can keep going around and down and come back again, clip that off and make it nice and secure and then you're going to work on um, this one here, which uh, was your cast on and then your bind off. Just follow the patterning around in a similar way, kind of doing that serpentine motion. And I'll put a link below to a slower tutorial for uh, getting your tails woven in. I hope you've enjoyed making your C2C mock miter square. This one on the left is the needle version and this one on the right is the loom version. I still need to block this one, uh, but as you can see, they look really close. The needle one just has a little bit bigger gauge to it, uh, but they're very close. You can see how making multiple of these can have a cool, funky design and uh, you can just have fun and play with it and make it uh, into any pattern your heart's content. I hope you have a great day. Check out more of our videos down below and on our channel. Subscribe for new videos and we'll see you soon. Happy looming everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us today where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.